My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. In our last Bible study, we learned in the fifth chapter that only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, was found worthy to take a scroll from our Father's hand. And so in this sixth chapter, we're going to see when Christ starts to break open those seven seals. And every time he does, a prophecy that he spoke of on earth will come to pass. So today we're going to make a comparison of the things that Jesus prophesied uh, in Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to look at Revelation chapter 6 when he causes those things to happen, okay? So, I want to start this Bible study in Matthew chapter 24, okay? Verse 1, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily, which means truly, I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they're showing him this beautiful temple that King Herod had rebuilt and all the beautiful buildings and things. And Christ says, Yeah, look at it. But I'm telling you, it's all going to be torn down. Uh, verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, this is important. When you look up the word coming, it is actually should have been translated presence. And when we look up the word world, it means age. So they actually asked him, what will be the sign of thy presence and the end of the age? You know, because the world will never end until Christ destroys this earth and remakes the new heaven and the new earth. Anyway, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So he says, one of the things that has to happen before I return is false Christ, false messiahs, who will deceive many. And so when we go to Revelation chapter 6, we're going to see when he opens that first seal, he brings this prophecy to pass. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bowl, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So this white horse is a symbol of the deception that would come in these last days, the false messiahs. Now notice Christ 
is the one who sets this white horse rider in motion. So some people try to say this is Jesus riding on the white horse. No, it's not. Jesus is riding on the white horse in Revelation 19 when he comes back to establish his kingdom on this earth. And this right horse rider is none other than the Antichrist. And notice he has a bow, but he has no arrows. And he's given only one crown. Because so, Satan's only going to have that one opportunity to rule. That, that three and a half years. And that's it. And when you compare the rider of the white horse to this the rider of the right horse, uh, you'll see the one in uh, chapter 19 could be none other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he has many crowns on his head. He's clothed in a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. So that's why you have to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Okay? So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Christ gave in Matthew 24. Now when we go back to Matthew 24, and verse 6, Jesus also said, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he prophesied that there would be wars being fought all over the world. And when we go back to Revelation 6 and read verse 3 and 4, we see when he breaks open the second seal, he causes this prophecy to be fulfilled. Revelation chapter 6 verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So the rider of the red horse is the war horse. And so this is Christ bringing to pass the prophecy that he spoke of in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Now when we go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, that means food shortages, and pestilence, that's in curable diseases like cancer and AIDS and earthquakes in diverse places and earthquakes in many different places. Now when we come back to Revelation 6, there's 5 and 6 we read, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, which means behold, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances or scales you know, where you weigh uh, a measurements of food in his hand. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So this is the famine that Christ prophesied of in Matthew 24. And this is Christ breaking open that third seal and bringing that prophecy to pass. Now, when we go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 8 says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. So this is just the beginning of sorrows. We haven't seen anything yet. Revelation 6, verse 7 and 8, it says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Verse 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So we see there's going to be a lot of killing and death caused by hunger and uh, natural disasters and wars. And we see these things happening right now, and they're just going to intensify. They're going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 9, we read, Then shall they deliver you up, Jesus says, to be afflicted, and shall kill you, 
and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now he's talking about what's going to happen to his followers, and it's happening in certain countries even now. But it's just going to intensify when the Antichrist appears on the world stage. And when we go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, we see him breaking open that fifth seal and bringing this prophecy to pass. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain, which means killed, for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And like I say, that's happening right now in uh, these third world countries and over in these Slavic countries and over in the Middle East and in Africa. But it's going to start, it's going to happen here in the United States of America as well when the Antichrist appears on the world stage. It's going to be a worldwide martyrdom just like Christ prophesied. Revelation chapter 6 verse 10, it says of these souls that John saw under the altar who was slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held and they cried with a loud voice saying how long O Lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth now notice they have already died and their souls are with God the Father and the Son in heaven and they're asking how long until you avenge our deaths verse 11 it says, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So they were told, here's your white robe, just rest. Because when the rest of that final generation of believers have become martyrs, then God is going to avenge your deaths. And so it's very important that you and I understand that there's a great possibility for us who are living in these last days that we're going to have to become martyrs for Christ. And if that be the case, remember, the Lord is not asking you and I to do anything that he hasn't done himself. Matthew chapter 24, when we jump down to verse 29, Jesus says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You see that? Verse 30. Uh, that's verse 29. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So notice when the sixth seal is broken, there's going to be this worldwide phenomenon right before Christ comes to gather his own. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, which, mean, which means behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, just like he said it would in Matthew 24, verse 29. And the moon became as blood. Matthew 24, 29 said the moon will not give her light. 13, Revelation 6, 13, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Matthew 24, verse 29 says, the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You see, this will happen when the sixth seal is broken. And that's how we know the sixth seal hasn't been broken yet. Anyway, Revelation 6, verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him 
that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So this is biblical proof that Christ is not coming until after the sixth seal has been broken. And so this secret rapture stuff that you're going to be zapped out before the great tribulation is not biblical. The Bible clearly tells us that he's coming at the end of the great tribulation. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, Take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain, and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs 
I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store. Check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.